Hello everyone, my name is Kate and I'm an economist at the Reserve Bank of Australia. In this video, I'll introduce you to bonds, the bond market and the yield curve. So, here's a quick overview of what we'll be covering in this video. First, I'll explain what a bond is. Then, I'll explain bond prices, bond yields and why the two of these move in opposite directions. Then, we'll talk about the yield curve and why people care about the yield curve. So, to start. What is a bond? So a bond is quite similar to a loan. It starts with a government or a business who needs to borrow some money, perhaps to pay for government spending or a new investment. Rather than borrow this money from an individual or from a bank, they might instead go to the bond market and issue a bond. So a bond is an agreement between two parties. It's actually why we call it a bond. The agreement creates a bond between them. On one side of this agreement, we have the government or business who needed to borrow the money, who we call the issuer of a bond. On the other side of the agreement, we have the lenders or the investors in the bond. So, the investors agree to give the government or business some money, which we call the principal, for a given period of time, which we call the term of the bond. For now, they own the bond and it's an asset for them. In return for borrowing this money, the issuer promises to pay some interest, which we measure as an interest rate, to the bond's owner. At the end of the bond's term, which we call the maturity of the bond, the issuer agrees to pay back the principal. When this happens, the agreement is finished and the bond ceases to exist. So, there are a couple of features of a bond that you should know about. The first is that the conditions of a bond, like the interest paid, and the maturity of the bond can't be changed after the bond is issued. Now this is quite different to loans, say, from a bank, where the loan rate and the term often change. In addition, the issuer would generally issue many bonds and therefore can borrow different amounts of money from many investors. Now this is quite useful when the issuer needs to borrow a large sum of money, greater than what one lender, such as a bank, might be willing to pay to lend them. The final feature is that bonds can be bought and sold by investors after they're issued. The bonds agreement promises to pay interest and principal to whoever owns the bond when those payments are due, which might not necessarily be the original investor they issued the bond to. An investor no longer wishes to own a bond, they can sell it onto another investor who will receive the bond and all future payments promised in it. So this actually means there are two bond markets. There is the market where bonds are first issued by borrowers to investors, which we call the primary market. And then there's the market where bonds that are already issued can be traded amongst investors, which we call the secondary market. Now, since investors can sell bonds in the secondary market, bonds have a market price. And this price can change over time as market conditions change. For example, let's say you own a bond and it pays 2% interest per year, but then interest rates in the market fall and all new bonds that are issued only pay 1% interest per year. So your bond is now more desirable to other investors that prefer to buy your bond and receive 2% interest instead of buying a new bond that only pays 1% interest. So if you wanted to sell your bond in the secondary market, you'd be able to get a higher price for it. This is because it's more in demand than those bonds that have lower interest payments. If the opposite had happened and interest rates had risen, then the price of your bond would have fallen. Now, this brings us on to our second topic, which is bond yields. So a bond yield is the percentage return an investor expects to receive each year on a bond from now until the bond matures. It summarises the remaining payments that the owner of the bond will receive relative to the price that they paid for the bond. At issuance, the yield represents the annualised cost of borrowing to the issuer. For the investor, the yield represents the annualised return on their investment in the bond. So a bond's yield is expressed like a normal interest rate and it always moves in the opposite direction to its price. If a bond price goes up, its yield will come down and this will affect the annualised return investors expect for purchasing bonds in the secondary market. So let's explore why this is.
Notice that the yield of a bond is dependent on the price its owner paid for it. So if the price of a bond changes, then its yield will also change. Let's return to our example from before. We had a bond that saw its price rise because interest rates in the market fell. With a higher price, this bond now becomes more expensive for investors to buy in the secondary market. However, the investor will still only receive the interest and principal promised on the bond when it was first issued. Remember, that doesn't change. Now, since this bond is more expensive to buy, the return the investor expects from purchasing the bond will fall. As this is what the yield measures, it also falls. The opposite would have happened if the price of a bond fell. In that case, the yield would have risen. So prices and yields always move in opposite directions, and this is quite important to remember when discussing the bond market. So, now that we understand what a bond yield is, we can learn about the yield curve. A yield curve shows the relationship between bond yields and their terms to maturity. Sometimes we call this the term structure of interest rates. So the yield curve we look at most of the time is actually the government yield curve, which we sometimes call the risk-free yield curve. We use the term risk-free because governments are always expected to pay back the borrowing they've done, and because government bonds are really common. Lots of them are issued, so lots of investors own them. This means the secondary market for government bonds is very active, and owners of government bonds can sell them on to other investors if they wish to very easily. So, now that we know what a yield curve is, let's draw one. To graph a yield curve, you first put all the terms to maturity along the x-axis and the yield on the y-axis. Then, starting with the shortest term and continuing on to longer terms, calculate the yield on all government bonds with each term to maturity remaining and plot it on the graph. Once you've plotted all these points, you can then draw a curve through the dots and voila, you have your yield curve. Now, notice that the shortest term on our yield curve is actually not a government bond yield, but it's in fact the RBA cash rate. We anchor the yield curve with the cash rate because it's also considered a risk-free interest rate and it has the shortest term in the economy. It's an overnight rate. So, there are two main aspects of the yield curve that determine its shape. It's level and it's slope. The level of a yield curve is how high or low the curve sits on the y-axis, and it tells you about the general level of interest rates in the economy. A high level indicates higher interest rates and vice versa. The slope of the yield curve reflects the difference between yields on short-term bonds and long-term bonds. The yields on these bonds can be different because of expectations investors have about future interest rates and uncertainty about what might occur in the future. Now, there are three main slopes of the yield curve we tend to talk about. The first is the normal yield curve, which slope upwards, such that short-term yields are lower than long-term yields. This is considered normal because investors usually demand higher yields to buy longer-term bonds, as there's more uncertainty for these investors who are lending money at longer terms. The yield curve can also slope downwards or invert, such that short-term yields are higher than long-term yields. And the yield curve can also be flat, where short-term yields and long-term yields are roughly the same. So, let's finish by looking at why the yield curve is important. The yield curve provides a crucial link between monetary policy and other interest rates in the economy. This is because the yield curve is used as a reference point for those who need to decide how to set a broad range of interest rates in the wider economy, such as yields on other bonds and financial assets, borrowing rates for households or businesses, down to interest rates on savings accounts. Now the yield curve is used as a reference point for all these decisions because it provides a really useful summary of what the many buyers and sellers of government bonds expect risk-free interest rates to be in the future, as well as how uncertain they are about these expectations and by extension how they expect the economy to perform. For example, a normal yield curve might tell us that investors expect interest rates to rise in the future, or it could tell us that they're feeling particularly uncertain about the future. On the other hand, an inverted yield curve tells us that investors expect interest rates to fall in the future. Now, several monetary policy tools work through their effect on the yield curve, 
For example, changes in the target for the cash rate, which affects both today's cash rate and the cash rate investors expect in the future, tends to shift the level of the yield curve up and down. Other monetary policy tools also work by moving the level of the yield curve or by changing its slope. So that's everything we need to cover on this topic for you to understand the basics of bonds and the yield curve. If you want to learn more on this topic, see our explainer on bonds and the yield curve, which you can find on the RBA website. And thank you for listening.